How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Wreck 2. This is from 2009 and is directed by Wam Balagaro and Paco Plaza. It stars Jonathan D. Malore, Manuel Valesco, and Oscar Zafra. Sorry if I mispronounced any of those names, uh, but obviously Wreck 2 is the sequel to Wreck, one of the all-time classic found footage films, uh, and one of the few found footage films to really spawn a whole franchise. Counting the quarantine movies, there are six of them. Um, yeah, pretty rare to get uh, that big a series out of found footage. I mean, obviously we had Paranormal and VHS as well, but I mean, look at Blair Witch, the granddaddy of the modern found footage air, that only had three movies in it. So, yeah, cool to see the Rec franchise get going. And like I said, Rec was an absolute classic. Here we are, getting the ball rolling again. Can we, can we catch lightning in a bottle twice? I know that uh, Rec 3 and 4, I haven't seen them yet, but I hear that they are significantly different than the first two, but in the second one, they really did try to recapture what made the first great, even going back to the same building. And you go back into the building and you say, I know those stairs, and I know why there's a big puddle of blood by them. And it really is kind of a bit of, you know, you had this movie that you really liked that was really cool, and getting to step back quite directly into the world of it. You know, it's very much a love letter to the first movie while also changing it up and doing things differently. And how do you do that? Apparently borrow from Aliens. Yeah, whenever you want to do a sequel to a movie, just take notes from James Cameron, I guess. Um, we get the Spanish equivalent of the SWAT team, much more heavily armed and knowing what they're up to, stepping into a mysteriously abandoned place with a uh, with their overseer from a, uh, a shady organization with his own secrets. Um, yeah, I can see some influence from the Alien franchise here. And even though this is more action heavy, it doesn't really uh, shift the genre too much. You know, it's still very much as horror, and it's not a hundred percent an action movie, but we do get some fun POV from the SWAT team blasting the zombies away, and then it does play with stuff a little more. It's not all 100% hard action. There is a, a few things where they, you know, change things up a little bit, especially introducing a second group of people Partial way through the movie that has a sort of an interesting POV thing behind them. I'll get into all that later. But needless to say, I think Rec 1 and 2 make a really good double feature. They really did their best to try to pick up the momentum from the first one and keep it going. I mean, the opening shot of this movie is the closing shot of the last one. I, I think it's just really fun that they were able to find that energy and keep it going again and still change things up. I, I think Rec 2 is pretty good. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, talk a little bit about that plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points, analyze part of it, and, you know, just go in and talk a bit about the movie. But I won't be covering the end, and I'll try not to give away any of the bigger stuff. Anyway, the movie. Uh, we open up with a SWAT team, or whatever Spain's equivalent of a SWAT team is, I don't know. Uh, but they're in the back of the truck, they're getting their gear on, and they're testing their cameras. They're getting ready to go in. And we see the apartment building from the first film from the outside. It's all wrapped in plastic. They have this really cool little hoop tunnel that they can go through to get into the building. It is really interesting, you know, being trapped in there for so long to get to cut back out and 
and see this, you know, and plus, we all know what's in there. Good sense of foreboding. But we also get a few people on the outside. There's a guy with a shopping bag going, my wife and my, my kid are in there. Uh, they were sick and I had to get them some medicine. But they're not letting him in. Really, though, you should probably quarantine this guy as well. Uh, but we also get a firefighter holding him back. And keep in mind, the, the first movie had some firefighter characters in there. His buddies are in there as well. And I do like just showing a few characters on the outside, reminding you, hey, the world of the first movie had people outside that really cared for the people in there. That's pretty cool. They go in and their government liaison character is saying, all right, be sure you document everything. A little suspicious, but good for us because that's our point of view. And we go in and we see the apartment. They brought the whole thing back. We're here again. That's, that's cool to, to be here again. You know, like I said, just seeing those iconic staircases with the blood <laughs> right there. And there's a few cases where you see the blood and you're like, I think I, I remember who died there, right? And it's just cool to be back. Well, we go in and we get some POV zombie blasting, you know? The cameras are mounted on everybody, so we get to see them running around, kind of a haunted house. Characters will pop up and scare you. These zombies really want to go at you. And it seems, you know, pretty cool. But then, of course, they get in a tight spot. The zombies seem to have them. And their mysterious government liaison whips out a cross and repels the zombies with religion. So, yeah, at the end of the first movie, they had where she got up to the penthouse and she found all that religious stuff. And it was one of those, you know, last minute heel turns. We're not going to tell you everything that happened, but here's a bunch of strange world building clues. And it makes you at the end of the first wreck go, wait, what happened here? And, and I thought that was a really good ending for the first wreck, you know a bit of lore without spelling it out but you do a sequel and you're gonna have to to explain at least part of that right well they do here and i i really do like uh, what they came up with you know they kind of put the writers in a hard spot unless they already knew what they were doing uh but they came up with a really interesting revelation that i feel works pretty well and gives the wreck zombies their own identity Plus, if you look at things like Evil Dead, the line between zombie and demon had kind of been blurred before. And I mean, hey, even in uh, Romero's Dawn of the Dead, when there's no more room in hell, right? So this does incorporate more of a supernatural element. And I know that not everybody's going to be in on that. You know, like when the zombies, there's points where the demon voice talks through them. And there's also a really fun uh, gimmick with night vision towards the end of this. And, like, the night vision gimmick, really heavy into Supernatural. And I know that not everybody wants that, but it is a fun gimmick. And they kind of had to go this direction with how it ended. But overall, yeah, I think, hey, you had to explain all that from the ending of Wreck 1. I don't want to go into 100% what they say it is, but I feel that it explains it well enough and makes things pretty interesting. But anyway, you get all that, you get them running around, you get them shooting at zombies, it's cool, intense action, but how long can we keep up the pace? The movie starts off burning very hot and bright, but how can they keep this up? Like I said, with the supernatural element, there are, you know, things that shake it up and like they'll do a bit where like say they drop a camera and then we're stuck far away from the main characters and we can't help them or see what's going on, you know, so they they do play with things a little bit. But what really shakes us up is the second group of characters. At one point they look down and lower on the stairwell are more people. Who are they? How do they get here? Smash cut to their footage. And, of course, it is a little bit jarring to 
to go to this second group of characters, especially it starts off with them strapping rockets to the back of a blow-up doll trying to send it flying into the sky. So at first you're like, what's going on here? But then you see that this is all before the movie starts even, and these are goofy kids and they're going to get pulled into it, and that's their camera from their point of view, and it's kind of like Back to the Future 2 with these characters, where a lot of things that happened in the first one you see from another point of view, and sometimes it makes more sense this time around. Sometimes we get more clues to the story and it's explained, oh, that's what that was, this other group of characters. Plus, we're padding our cast out again because we do lose a few people. And overall, I do think, you know, this sort of middle third of the movie with the other people, it shakes things up. It plays with an interesting point of view. I thought that was really cool as well. Um, but yeah, I have to say, I don't want to go too much farther in the movie. It does build to an interesting climax, and, and there is some really cool ideas, but again, I shouldn't go much farther. I don't want to spoil things, but I guess Rec 2, it really is like a, one of those classic double features, you know, like the Hatchet movies all connect, Halloween 1 and 2 connect, uh, the Thing prequel and The Thing. This really is, you know, add it to watch with part one, watch them back to back. It's a really classic double feature. It continues the momentum of the first one. We're going back in, continuing the story, and it really is just, you know, a little bit more action heavy, but overall, it just serves to, to make the first one a, a longer experience, and it is just really nice of them to say, hey, let's make a sequel, and just take this really good thing we had and just let it burn a little longer. As I said, I haven't seen 3 and 4 yet, but I know that they they changed things up. I'll reserve my judgment until I actually see them. But I hope to cover the rest of this franchise soon. Because, you know, Wreck 1 and Wreck 2 were, were so good. And I, I, I do want to see what happens next. Uh, anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my found footage playlist. If you guys click there, you can see me review things like Houses October Built and the first two VHS movies are in there. So anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Found footage playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.